Go out there and be 
perfectly honest and forceful. Can I come back to think about what I think about them? No, it has to be from the heart. Spontaneous, do it now. Now? Now, go. <coughs> Meryl Streep reportedly has a new 
love and delight. Can you tell us about this? Meryl Streep has many friends, but for what it's worth, she's recently built a new home in Hollywood and installed a swimming pool shaped like Raymond Burr. <laughs> Last Tango in Paris came to cable TV, and I was wondering how they got Marlon Brando to look so bulky overweight. And she stuffed the live squirrel in his brain filled pocket. What was Farley Granger's first job in Hollywood? Farley started out humbly. His first job was Oh, oh, wow. Okay, well, you know what? That looks like that's all you're going to get. <laughs> 
guys run and hide when you were so sick? No, you never did. You damn right I did. Because I loved you, and I wanted to be there for you, and I always was, right? Yes, yes, yes. What can I say? I'm a no-good rat. I deserve to be, to be, I don't know, whatever they do to no-good rat is probably too good for me. I feel terrible, but what can I do about it? You let me a baby. See? See what? What you said, you called it my baby. Well, so? Even you instinctively feel that way. And I so do I. It's my baby. It's like a part of me, part of my very being, part of my heart. Can I give my heart away? I sure have no trouble giving away to all those guys. That's not the same thing you know. Look, all I know is that you signed all those papers and you paid all your doctor's bills and I took care of you. <coughs> Mary, I'll pay you back, I promise. Okay. Sure. Where will you get the money? I have a job. A job? You call that pop turn girl at the local X-rated movie theater a job? Sure, what did you call it? A temporary inconvenience, like all the other girls you have. Okay, at least I work. Now what is that supposed to mean? Because I stay at home and take care of the household, eat or work. I'm no good. Is that what you should say? No, no, no. Look, I promise I'll pay you back. I don't care about the money, all right? It's the baby. You promised me to give her to him. I know. I don't care. When you heard I couldn't have kids, you promised you'd give me a baby. I know. You were so depressed. I hate it when you're like that. It was the only thing I could think of to help you. Maybe I didn't know what I was getting into. Maybe. Right. You know me. I'm like a kid at times. They hated me. 
They hated me. Have they called? Not yet. They should have seen it. Would you like to? No, thank you. <laughs> what the hell did those murderers know? I was so good. So you weren't worried about it. It only happened once again. Yeah, you're right. Would you like a cup of tea? Sure. We'll make some because I'm going out. <laughs> Don't be despondent. Despondent? Who's despondent? They're the ones who are despondent. Not I. I will conquer. You'll see. The <coughs> vet man is there will be a star. You're exactly right. I'll give him hell tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes. Tomorrow. I'll give him hell tomorrow. And someday, I'll give hell hell. <coughs> You're in the start, so why don't you worry each other? Going out to find Thanks, Anne. Bye. We are the hollow men. We are the stuffed men. Leaning together. Headpiece. Ben, get down from there. Headpiece filled with straw. Hey, I said get down from there. Echoed madness, sadness, laughter. Stop, please just get down from the chair. A tight rope, <coughs> a sad disaster. Why are you doing this? You're fine this morning. Define fine. What? I said define the word fine. I didn't think you wanted to kill yourself this morning. Shape without form, shape without color. Does any of this have to do with me? A paralyzed force, gesture without emotion. Is it because you think I was a bad mother? Now you listen here. I was the best mother that I knew how to be. It was the best thing in your life. And when your father left, I said, raise you all by myself. I'll be damned with you. Take that away from me. Eyes I dare not meet in dreams. Ben, are you even listening? In death's dream kingdom. Wait, Ben, really? Listen to me. In death's other kingdom. I don't have no even minute for you, but it's only because I love you and I work. I work day and night. Just you don't have to grow up like I did. Just you have the clothes you're wearing and make sure you have food to eat. This is the way the world ends. I've never done anything wrong to you ever. I only wanted to help you. This is the way the world ends. And this? This is the thanks I get? This is how you're paying me for giving up my life for you? For being the best mother that I knew how? No, I won't be responsible for this. I won't let you throw your life away. Ben, I love you. I'm your mother, and I love you. We can be happy. We can be happy together. We can get down from there. How about you just sit down and have dinner together, huh? Just like we used to? No, no, no. Please, Ben, please don't do this to me. This is the way the world ends. Not with the bang, but with the whimper. Hey, what's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong? Tell me, um, you call. I rush over here. It's July 14th. And of all kinds, we had this great idea for our place, and then we came up with this. What's wrong with this? It is a good idea. Oh, come on, it's terrible. I resent that. We have a fairly good food. Ever since Adam and Eve did dinner together, when was two flies and a pork chop ever a good idea for our place? Jerry, it's not even a good idea. Oh, I think it was very much easier. Computer on! And now, <coughs> focus! 
big shark going after you with full length out. You and I go first. Again? In your place is always dusk. Because you can't spell twilight. What's wrong with dusk? You'd be better off in total darkness.
friend hour. I was stuck with little Larry. He was a trifle too He was so short he had to climb a ladder to tip his hat. <laughs> Banker, junior officer, when girls here I work at the bank, they begin to show interest in me. 
<laughs> How about that? A joking banker. Not really a banker, just a junior officer. A joking junior officer banker. Now you've got it, what do you do? Librarian. I should have known, your smile speaks volumes. And still they come. I like a witty man, do you know where I can find one? It's just a pretty girl, as far as me, teach humorous heights. Is that here in town? <laughs> oh, now you did it. I think we hit up quite well. Well... Well, I'm just an old-fashioned guy, and you're packed away with all those books about every subject in the world. You're probably living more wild or more knowledgeable, more memorable type of life. It's possible. I'm just a simple guy. Oh, right, decent. No wild man in me. I believe in marriage, do you? Do I what? But we're asking at midnight. No, do you believe in marriage is the one I want to know? Well, yeah, if it's a lasting one. There you go. We do have something in common. None of us green for marching down the aisle. One step only, two by two. Side by side. Forever. Through thick and thin. Through storm and strife. Man is a husband. Woman is a wife. And we've never seen. Never seen me else, ever. <gasps> Jim! Surely! <laughs> <laughs>
The bride's gown was, a, was made of organza with a Venice lace lotus and a chapel lace train. What a flower, but what was that in the She wore a pearl brooch and carried a handkerchief from sweetheart lace. She wore the brooch of pies to divert attention from her humble bike. She's the only girl who can eat corn on top of a picket fence. The groom is a consultant with the firm of Grease, Beak, and Blood. He consults with his bosses to what they'll have to lunch and then he brings it to them. The bride, a former model, plans to continue in that field. She models bicycles, says he. More than 50 guests enjoyed their reception in the morning. 50 guests out of 500 ate too much enjoyment. After the affair, the couple headed to the nearby mountains and lizards watched. The groom had to be dragged, kicking and screaming to the train station while waving a large sign of great help. No, that didn't happen at all, I know. Through the whole thing, I kept out of close eye. It did happen, remember? I said, I have the truth for the truth.
two people that attract each other, they want to kiss and not scream? Yes. Yeah, maybe even two sometimes. It all depends. On what? On their chemistry and how they feel about each other. You know what I think? What? I think the walls of this thing got thicker. Grace? <laughs> Grace? This isn't great. Now I'm really trapped. Wait a second. If the walls of that thing are getting thicker, how come I can hear you and you can hear me? Perfectly. Clearly at my head. What? <laughs> now you're gonna tell me you can't hear me? Guys, speak up. I can't hear you. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Come on, you're doing it. Speak up. I said this is ridiculous. Great, I heard that. This sure is a predicament. <laughs> come on, you gotta speak up. I can't hear you. So you won't even come out there to kiss me. For some reason, walls of this thing just keep on getting thicker. <laughs> Back to normal now. Just as I thought. What? That there's more than this meets the eye? Well, never mind. So, would you like to come in? <laughs> you know, that's an excellent question. No one's ever tried. No one? I know, it's amazing, but I haven't been able to find one willing woman to give up her life outside the box, so to speak, and come in here and let it Don't ask me why not, they just won't. I wonder why not. I have no clue. I think they'd like it. They're going to pay, bring the meals, they're going to date night. Sounds pretty regular to me. Regular is what it's all about here, baby. No surprises. It's all down and back to what? What about finding a, finding a girlfriend, falling in love, having kids? What about it? You can't see those things inside the box. Oh, yeah, you're right. It seems like a bit of a problem. Kind of cramped. A bit of a problem? Kind of cramped? It would be a beaut of a problem. Yeah, I guess you have a point there. So, would you ever consider marrying a guy like me? Is that his whole life is inside that box? This box is my whole life, you know. I do have other interests. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. What? I like to play box ball. Yeah. <laughs> Throw my box jokes. That's it. I have enough. I'm leaving. No, wait. You gotta pay your more lines up than the script. No, I don't. Give me that. Hey, come on. No, no, don't do that. Come on. Hey, come on. Now what do you have to say, huh? Cat got your tongue? Uh, cat... Tongue... What? Well, come... Curtains... Cat... Come on, it's all over now. Come... On... Over... That's it, I've had enough actors. All I know is... Be at theater in... It's their whole life. I'm Mary Mary County. Goodbye. Mary... Counting. Girl exits. Curtain. Some were joyous occasions, some were a little sad. Let's see what happens when Ed Morgan and Jane Brain feel their morning high school meeting. Jane? Jane Brain? Well, I don't like Ed Morgan. Why? Long ball. Swimming. You haven't changed a bit. I met six other liars who said the same thing. A few more bounds, maybe. A few gray hairs, for sure. <laughs>
added her measurement. <laughs> yeah, she was supposed to be a beauty contest. He came back the next year and changed numbers. <laughs> yeah, he raised the figures appropriately. Sure, it's so bad. Loser is 
a fat tourist who falls asleep at a luau with an apple in his mouth. <laughs> Well, first of 
first of all, let's play about the Korean War. The Korean War? The Korean War. The Korean War. Is it fictional? Uh, no, there actually was one. Really? I've never heard of it. See? That doesn't mean anything. It could be one of those flat wars with a large gold ball. Us in Korea. China and maybe, I don't know, I can't tell. Grab your little country. No one's your problem. Well, who's going to come see it? No one. It's a showcase. What? Any good? I don't know. I'd ask the director. Before or after? Before. I don't want to read it. It's still not known. Smart. Very professional. What did he say? He doesn't know. He thinks it's a metaphor. I like it. I respect any director that can turn what he doesn't know into a metaphor. I think you're hard, Melvin. Are you a soldier? Yeah, I open the show. Fantastic. <coughs> the three lines. To open the show? Good. Very good. No. The three lines for the entire show. The curtain rises. I'm in a box. I stand and shout. Look, an eagle, a free bird in flight. How I envy your proud king. And that's it. That's <laughs> very nice of you. And bang! I get it. I sniper off stage. And after that, I lie there. Dead. That's it. I'm dead. For how long do you lie there? Is it late? Either way, two hours. No intermission. <laughs> two hours on my back to the audience. The director doesn't want him to see my face because he's afraid my nose could twitch. So Karen, I ask you, is this the New York debut that will advance my career? Bert, are you kidding me? Tony the back would kill for this role. Do the line. Come on. I'm not sure, but sure it is. Wait, hold on. Be the eagle. Like, uh, fly around like an eagle. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure, if they want to. Okay. No, 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 you're flying like a parakeet. You grand, swoop, soar, big wings. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. The form. The face of a hunter. Look, an eagle, a free bird in flight. How I envy your proud plumage. Gunshot. Bang! Oh! 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 <laughs> Ma! I'm dying, Ma! I love you! <laughs> well? Oh, you have to do it. You are so real. Thanks. Did you like the ad look on my mother? I had to do it. But you, what the heck were you doing? It was my scene, and you fell too. I couldn't help it. You were communicating so much of, well, you know, death, pain, grief, all that stuff. I feel it. I wasn't sure, but now I know. I'm an actor, and I must act. <laughs> no question about it. You can do this. And maybe three lines put on your resume, it'll look like a lead. Thanks. I needed to hear that. But this brings me to my next question. What? Should I invite agents? Of course, they leave the intermission anyway. But Bert, you haven't mentioned my people. Oh, it was good, really helpful. You had a real sense of, uh, Bert. <laughs> and call your folks to let them know. I'll have to write. They just got an unlisted number. So I'm going to do it. My first play in New York. It may not be much, but after my lines, I'll get plenty of bunch of new drinks. I just want to fall asleep. And you don't know. In this business, you never know. They could turn into something. Let's get out of here and go rent a movie or something. Look, I need one play. Uh, I better take my script. I may want to make some changes. <laughs> this is our Friday night. Sitting at home, watching nothing but bad commercials and random with the same stupid, fun-filled week in the movie. And I never used to see him like this. He never used to let one strand fall out of place. I have no idea what happened. Well, this is a great part. And that's for my brother, you know, right? Honey. They have my stuff and stay out of my life. That's a great part. Honey! One second, it's a good part stuff. Damn! What? That was the best part! You've seen that best part about a million times! What's wrong with me not watching it a million? One time! Can't we just talk about something? What's up with you women always wanting to just talk? What's up with you men and always wanting to just watch television? We're so bugged about this. what we always do. That's the problem, Dan. This is what we always do. Don't you ever want to do anything new? No, I want to sit on this couch with my girl and watch this movie for a million times. Well, I don't want to sit here with you. I want to go out. I want to go dancing. Take me dancing. <laughs> <laughs> dancing? You don't dance? No, Dan. 
you don't think so. I can't stand him turning this potato into spits on the couch and watching the box of gloves. I knew you were going to do this. All men do. Hey, easy now. I should have listened to my mother. I never moved in with you. I should have taken that job in the city. That's probably the job you have. It's a great job. Great? You think my job is great? Sam, I should have an airport restaurant. That's not a great job. I can't believe you think it's a great job. You're such a pigeon. A what? A pigeon? How am I a pigeon? Yes, a pigeon. You went away to college only to come back to this town and move into a small apartment three blocks away from your mother, who never stops calling, by the way. I really don't know where all this is coming from. I mean, we were just watching TV, and all of a sudden I'm a pigeon. What is it you're trying to tell me? I want a change and a big one. Let's go on vacation. No, I know. Let's go. Let's move. No, 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 no. I know. Let's go backpacking across Europe. Europe? Why would we go to Europe? We're fine right where we are. Because we can. Because Europe is there for people like us to go and see. Oh my god, they're a duck. Now I'm a duck. <laughs> Two seconds ago, the pigeon. And four seconds ago, it's a potato. She gets me out there, babe. That's a kind of confused. Walking in the park the other day, and I saw these two ducks sitting in a puddle. A puddle. I mean, we have all the big bodies of water swimming, so what? Why would they choose a puddle? Why not a lake, the ocean, or the parts of ponds for that matter? No, they were just sitting there, floating around in a puddle. A puddle. Hmm. Are you okay, Gloria? I mean, you're starting to freak out a little bit. There's something I can do. <laughs> I need you to do something because I'm sitting there floating around in a puddle. Okay, but can we at least get up to nine because nine is what's going on and I kind of miss you. Oh! That's it! I'm leaving and don't ask me where I'm going because I'm not telling you! <laughs> Sweet 
Never worry. I'm just taking baby mine. Take it once and then strap it. Right up. When you tell you there's no decency left in a man's world, turn the other ear. Wait. You're a literal too, aren't you? Through and through. Against capital punishment? You know what? Come on, let's get the sun over. <laughs> then why did you kill that old man? I had a reason. He tried to steal my collection of ten card walnuts. <laughs> that doesn't seem like much of a reason. Best reason in the world. Let's say, let's get the sun away. I mean, you kill someone. You have to have a reason. A good reason. No lectures, huh? Let's move. I changed my mind. You what? I changed my mind. You're not so liberal in understanding after all. Hey, no value judgment. Set me free. I don't think so. Look, you're young, pretty, you're about my age. Set me free, we'll make beautiful music together. <laughs> Sorry, I mean hypocrisy more than anything. I'm no hypocrite. Murderer, yes. Hypocrite, no. You're a phony. Here it goes. Well, I gave it my best shot. More power to you. <laughs> Follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. But yet. 
as you use your dog. Tip not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I'm sick of my fun. And I am sick, but I look not on you. You do impeach your mother for too much. To leave the city and commit yourself in the hands that love you not, to trust the opportunity of night as ill counsel of this desert place with the wretch of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think of not in the night, <coughs> nor doth this would let the world of company, for you, in my respect, are all the world. Then how can it be said, I'm alone, when all the world is here to look on me, all run for me and hide me in the earth, and leave me the mercy of wild beasts? The wild is half, not such a heart as you, who run when you will. The story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin, the mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger, bootless speed, when cowardice pursues and battle flies. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. Or if you do fall, do not believe I will not be vicious upon you in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. Fly, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love, as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell, to die upon the hand I love so well. Ow, that hurt. Tommy, you left this in my car. Thanks. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yeah. What? Go home. Oh, come on, Tommy. How many times do I have to apologize? I only need to teach you once. A lot. Look, if you did not play tennis, why didn't you just say so? I know how to play tennis. Really? How long have you been playing? Years? Maybe you should sue the guy who slipped that racket. I should sue you for blinding me. Stop being such a baby. I only hit you once. <coughs> I only let you serve one. You were so twice while you doing a TV Wonder impression right now. <laughs> Never mind. Anyways, what did you think of my friends, Muffin and Bambi? Why? <laughs> well, I was thinking, maybe you like them, maybe you is that what this is about? Is that why you suggested we play tennis with your friends? So you could try to set me up? Yes, if I told you that's why we were even punk? No. Please. Now didn't you find them nice? Yes, I did. Didn't you find them attractive? Yes, I did. Don't you want to ask one of them out? No, I don't. <laughs> why not? So, between the two of them, they had like your pee. You know it took me 20 minutes to find out they're out of the building with this tennis ball? God, you're so picky, so they can go to Harvard. Go there. They can Okay, well, if you didn't like them, I have someone else I'd like you to meet. That's all right. Just give me a little. No, really. You like this one. She's really smart. I met her in my psych class. Really? Isn't it? Is it these? But everyone else calls her Twinkle. That's it. <laughs> Twinkle, Muffin, Bambi. Why is that every girl you know sounds like they just walked out of a Disney movie? Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> well, you should fit in then, Grumpy. Cute. Why are you so interested in my social life? Because we've been friends for a long time and I care about you. Care about me a little less. I'm my body to different <laughs> Enough with the eye already. Give me one question, will you? No. Good. How long has it been since you had a girlfriend? A little while. A little while? Yes, a little while. But you define a little while? <laughs> Does that mean this decade? Tommy, have you had a girlfriend since Reagan was president? <laughs>
Shrek got his ten little fists. Hey, Julie, give that back. Mom! Let me guess. Dear diary, I wonder if Ken truly loves Barbie. And when will he tell her? I haven't played with the Barbie since the sixth grade. Mom! Please, I saw you just last night brushing one. That was ballroom Barbie. Now, will you please give me my diary? Sure, right after my talk. Give me that! Whatever, it's not like you or anything interesting to me. I have more of a social life than you do. <laughs> I'm sure, please. Well, I do. When was the last time you had a date? Well, I... Thank you. My point is exactly. Wait a minute, you're not even allowed to date, and you're not getting on my dating status? I have to have a date with a really cute guy. No, you don't. Yes, I do. And he's really into me. Well, it's easy for a guy to be really into you when you're the only one who can see him. He's not invisible, stupid. <laughs> he's a hunk. Oh, yeah? What's his name? Robbie. Robbie what? Robbie Sharp, okay? <laughs> Robbie Sharp? Wait a minute. Robbie Sharp as in Sharp the Sharp as in the senior. Robbie Sharp? That's right. Feel free to tell me how jealous you are. I'm not going to tell you how jealous I am. I am going to tell you how naive you are, though. I'm not naive. I'm a woman. Well, hey, woman, did you tell Robbie you're only 14? No. Robbie doesn't care about things like that. He likes me for me and not my age. Your age should be the reason he doesn't like me. You're too young, Anne. No, I'm not. Well, did you tell Mom about your not at the town with Musclehead? No. And you're not going to either. You're right, I'm not. But you are. Why do you always have to go stomping on all my fun? Ever since I got into high school and became a social gamer, and now that I have a guy who's actually interested in me instead of you, you've made it your personal mission to tear me down. You need a reality check and roll and fast. First of all, going to a few dances and parties with me hardly makes you something as social. And second of all, Robbie is interested in a bimbo girl who laughs at all the bonehead things he has to say. Robbie is using you, Aaron. No, he's not. If he was using me, then why would he go on and on about how much he likes me? Because he knows that that's what you want to hear. Trust me, Robbie's not a good guy to go on a date alone with. You're too young, and Robbie doesn't want to take advantage of that. So all those things you said about liking me, and how much you wanted to go out with me, that was all just a game?
why that alert person can't take, it would certainly cut down on the divorce rate. But if they do get married and they suddenly feel the bloom is off the rose, there are warning signals. These, if noted, give the couple a time to stand back and make a reassessment of their marriage. Right. For instance, a marriage is in trouble when a man walks in his sleep and is carrying a suitcase. <laughs> marriage is in trouble when the wife takes the cup out of the electric toothbrush and replaces it with a hammer. <laughs> or when she throws her cigarette butt into the Grand Canyon and asks him to step on it. <laughs> when there's a moth going on the love scene. It's <laughs> sad, but then the whole divorce issue is a sad one. But there are some things that could help marriage stay on track. Right, like this one. Marriages are like illnesses. You should only have one at a time. The saddest man in the world was a bigamist whose wives did not understand him. Men, tell your wife everything before she reads about it. <laughs> Here's a Confucius type marital maxim. When you put a woman on a pedestal, remember it's easier for her to kick you in the face. <laughs> Life isn't all candlelight and money. Marriage is an educational institution, but why are there so many dropouts? <coughs> Marriage is habit forming. You should only be married once, but if you work it right, once is enough.
how does it work right here in our state? Let's find out. Yes, folks, all you past, present, and future victims of criminal physical attacks can be compensated for your troubles. You are entitled to money regardless of your race, creed, or color. If you receive a simple bruise or laceration, you receive 95 cents. A broken digit, digit is worth $1.80. A black eye, $2. Abdominal pummeling, where victims suddenly... <clears throat> resulting in loss of appetite or sluggy disease, where victims suddenly double over in pain when confronted by a stranger, $14.75. Broken arm, $15. Broken jaw, $27.50. Internal injuries, food required, $31. Multiple wounds due to persistent bludgeoning, $80. Thorough maiming, $82.39. Simple death, $190.05. And five cents, the big bundle. A little advice about the rules for all you attackees out there. Application for payments must be made within 10 days after the attack. Or five days before death. Whichever occurs first. Not the pricing structure. A black eye brings $2. A broken jaw is worth $27.50. A simple taunt or mouth insult might enrage even the most experienced hood and cause him to add injuries to your list, hoisting you to the high money category. It's possible he might even kick you while you're down and break a few ribs, which goes for $30 a copy. However, you must not request that he injure you severely, as this is a violation of the Code Article 3, Section 5. Should you be subjected to a second attack, the compensation is increased by 20%. A third job means a hike of another 40%. No one victim will be paid for more than three beatings within an eight-month period. All payments are guaranteed by the Bleeding Heart and Vital Organs Insurance Company. Just a word of caution to all of you out there. Remember, the criminals are said by some to be emotionally distraught, victims of a callous society. When he asks you for money, he's really asking for help. So play it safe, and give him your money. You'll be glad you did. <laughs> Incredible person that you should let more people see. And 
don't think so. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There's just something about coming back here that makes me feel like a little fat girl. <laughs> Sit down. Tell me about your trip. I don't want to sit down. Where were you all that time? You never bailed me out. I didn't know you needed bailing out. Well, I did. Here we go again. You had a miserable childhood. Your father's overbearing. Your mother ignored you. What else is new? Don't you think everybody looks back on the past with some regret or bitterness about something? You have this unpleasant chip on your shoulder, which is very unattractive. You only come home when I beg you to. And when you do, all you can do is be disagreeable about the past. Life marches by, Chelsea. I suggest you get on with it. You're such a nice person. Can't you think of something nice to say? I married Bill in Brussels. What in Brussels? I married Bill. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <coughs> you have an odd way of filling up good I know. Very nice. Well, he's better than just nice. He's an adult, too. I decided to go for an adult marriage this time. It's a standard buyer contract with three blocks. If it doesn't work out, I still get to keep my adult cat. What about Billy? Well, Bill gets to keep Billy. Will Bill live with you? Yes. That's part of the reason why Bill had to get back to LA. He's murdering his ex wife. She doesn't want the kid anyway. Do you? Yes. Oh. I'm so pleased. Nothing to it. I'm twice as old as you were when you married Norman. Think that means anything? I hope it means you'll only be half as much trouble. Norman's going to be so surprised. <laughs> I'll pet. All I want is for you to be happy. Could have fooled me. He makes me feel like my shoes are on the wrong feet. That's just Norman's manner. He he enjoys keeping people on their toes. I'm glad he gets the pleasure out of it. How long do you plan on keeping this up? I don't know. I can't talk to him. Have you ever tried? Yes. But we've discussed the relative stupidity of Puerto Rican baseball players. I don't think I know. Well, he'll be home any minute. We'll be happy to introduce you. I don't think I know the person. He's been away for years at a time. I know. Maybe someday we can try and be friends. No one is 80 years old. He has heart palpitations. He's trouble remembering things. When exactly do you expect this friendship to start? 